So I'm here with Marie Forleo. Hi. And we've known each other for 17 years. It's Seven, gonna be. 17 years. Yeah. Even though I always say it's been over three years, <laughs> which is also accurate. <laughs> um, but wanted to talk, let people know about your journey a little bit because it's really inspiring. Oh, thank you. And um, and so when I knew when we first met um, th over three years ago, <laughs> you were um, like, where, where, what was going on in your career? Oh my God, I was at the baby stages. Um, I had a very very tiny coaching practice, and I was trying to figure out how to build it, how to grow it, how to do it. I was bartending and waiting tables as the primary um, way to support myself. And then of course, any other little side jobs or anything I could do to like keep myself afloat while I was trying to figure out how to grow that coaching business. So And how did, how did you feel when I would come and sit at the bar? Oh, I loved having you. That was you. fun. Well, so I was working at this one place in the West Village on West 9th Street, actually called The Village, and bartending. And I remember you came to sit down, and I think I served you a beer. It's really like a good, like a Stella. Yeah. And uh, it was super fun. I wanted you to stay and hang out and spend as much time there as possible. Yeah, that was fun. I didn't want him to leave. So, because um, I think so many people... Um, you know, have jobs, you know, like I did, like everybody has to have, you know, their day job um, where they're bartending or babysitting or what, you know, whatever it may be with dreams of what they really want to do. Yeah. And it's been awesome watching you go from you know, have having a coaching business, tiny. And a tiny coaching business, tiny. Um, and and going, you know, to building this empire uh, that that you have, um, and and also just want to let people know about B school. And would you say that? what you're teaching in B-School is kind of what you learned and what you put to practice along the way yeah. to 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 really get to where you're doing like what you want to do with in your heart and your soul and it's like a full expression of you which yes. I feel like <clears throat> is the dream you know for so many creative people is to be able to do the the creative the business work that you are so passionate about and that is an expression of you and so talk us through how you maybe learned about what you now teach yeah. and and yeah so to give context you know I started coaching in 1999 that's when I discovered that that was a thing and it didn't make sense to me in terms of logic because I was 23 years old and I was very, very well aware of how inexperienced I was. I was full of self-doubt and uncertainty. I didn't know how to start or run a business. I don't come from a wealthy family. I had lots of debt after college and um, after a string of failed jobs on Wall Street and in magazine publishing, and then when I discovered this ability to kind of do my own thing, I knew it was the thing I needed to do, but I had no idea how to actually cross that chasm from having it be a dream to having it be a reality. And so the bartending and the waiting tables was what I did to put myself through school as an undergrad, and I just went back to that because it was the only way I knew right. how to provide for myself. So the reason I'm saying that is I was very, very clear that in addition to being the best coach I could possibly be, that's like a whole craft, just like acting, just like writing, you know, basket weaving, fine art. There's a craft to the thing that you wanna do, but I think what the world hasn't really talked about 
too much up until recently is you can't just be good at your craft. You actually have to be good at the business side as well. And yeah. That's the part that we haven't really taught a lot of young people, and I certainly didn't know coming out of college. And thankfully, I realized early on is that I had to master two things. Yeah. And so I started going um, to uh, as many like business conferences and um, seminars and reading books and doing everything I could to learn about this world of entrepreneurship, which I didn't know about. Yeah. And as I was going on that journey and learning about the power of sales and marketing and how to organize things and how to be a, like there's all these things. I was like, whoa, I don't know any of this. Um, I say that because as I was going to get that education myself and putting things into practice, first I noticed what was working and what wasn't working, but then I noticed a huge hole in the marketplace. You know, um, obviously I love men, I love you, but I noticed everywhere I went, it was like 99.9% .9 men teaching on stages. And sadly at that time, not completely, this is a generalization, most of the philosophy was this notion that customers are nothing more than numbers at the bottom of your balance sheet, that you mm. have to like extract as much profit as possible and like shake people upside down. And it just felt very unethical. It felt not in alignment with what I believed business could be, which was a complete expression of your values and integrity mm. yeah. that you could put your customers like on a pedestal in a sense and over deliver value to them that in terms of marketing and sales that you could do so with a huge sense of creativity and integrity and transparency with your values up front. And so I saw this chasm between how small businesses were being educated and taught at that time. Again, it's like the late 90s, early 2000s right. versus what I thought was possible and what I was also seeing working in my own experience. Mm -hmm. And you know this because you and I got together around this time. I had um, been working really hard to get my coaching practice together, but I also realized something that I wasn't comfortable just calling myself a coach. It felt so narrow and limiting. Right. And I loved dance. I loved fitness. I loved writing. Like there were all these other things. And it was about when you and I got together, just around that time when I started calling myself a multi passionate entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Because I like to do a lot of things, and I find that many creatives, especially, actors and writers and different types of people who consider themselves artists, it's a broad term, also feel that way. Yeah. And what I started to learn, um, and we'll get to the core answer of your question, was that there were all of these skills that particularly creative people kind of push against and poo poo like, oh, I'm the artist, mm -hmm. I'm the creative, someone else should do the business side for me, or I need a partner to do that. Yeah. I'm just the ideas person. And I know, I know just on that, just there's, you know, so many actors um, that I will come across. Um, you know, a lot of actors are committed to training mm -hmm. um, and, you know, train with me and committed impulse. Um, and as soon as you start to address, and it could be any any creative field, especially if you've trained in it, as soon as you cross that line of like, okay, now you have to get it out into the world. Yes. It's so, it can create so much panic. Yep. And, you know, uh, it just triggers everything back. Like, you know, am I worthy? And just what you were touching on, like just the notion that if, you are it, some kind of a creative being, artist of some kind, that putting your art out there into the marketplace is, there's some, I don't know exactly where it comes from, but there's some belief that that means that you're less of an artist. Yes. Like there's some, it's like, or there's like a deep feeling like if I only create my art um, it will get re like that alone will will the world will you know come into my living room and Bow be like you yes it's you yes. and it's a really arrogant way to think if you step mm. back and depersonalize yourself from it right if you take yourself <clears throat> out of the equation to think that anyone like the best physician the best scientist the best inventor, the best writer, the best choreographer, the best novelist, to think that you're just so good at what you do, 
right? And the world should just come and find you and bang on your door and show up with like a credit card in hand or a contract or whatever. Right. It is such an arrogant way to think. I never and thought of it as arrogant. It's super duper arrogant. So right. here's what one of the things we talk a lot about in B-School. You know, when you think about your ideal customers, whether that's casting agents, you know, whether that is managers, whether that is um, screenwriter, whatever, whatever you're doing, right? You have an ideal customer, the people that you're trying to reach. It could be an audience. To when you have those people, it's not their job to find you. It's your job to find them. Mm -hmm. And one yeah. of the core principles that we talk about and that I really emphasize in B-School and everything that I teach is that if you have a gift to share with the world, a product, a service, a creation, and you genuinely believe in your heart of hearts, in your soul, that it would benefit people, either bringing them joy, showing them a new perspective on the world, uh, it performs some type of solution for somebody. Again, it doesn't matter what or it is. Or just pu generate entertainment, which yes, has tremendous joy. value for the culture. A hundred percent. Happiness. Yeah. All of those things, right? Yeah. Those are valuable in very real terms and you don't do everything in your power to market the heck out of it, to get it out and to share it with people, you are stealing from those who need you most. And that's a complete paradigm mm. shift. It's a total I paradigm love shift. I love that. And here's the other misconception I think a lot of people have, especially when it comes to sales and marketing. Again, it is understandable that people have that sense of panic, that people have that sense of negative resistance. You know, I think most of us, when we think of the terms, even sales and marketing, I have this image that pops up in my mind. It's an old school image, but it's like of a used car salesman, like totally. you know, someone super greasy, yes. for, you know, and like gold chains and like chomping on a cigar, like, all right, I got another one for you. Come over here, sweetheart. You know, like I got a deal. And first of all, that is the old school type of marketing. Um, it's becoming less and less effective as our culture thankfully evolves. Second of all, there's another type of marketing, what I call modern marketing, which actually brings out the best of your humanity when you're practicing mm. it, not the worst. So what does the best mean? Uh, your generosity, your empathy, your compassion, your willingness to provide value long before you ever ask for a quote unquote sale, whatever that means building relationships, um, being there for people, building trust. Again, all of the core traits that you would probably assign to the best of who you are, when you are practicing modern marketing in the way that we teach you in B-School, you actually strengthen those traits. Those are the traits that you need to lead with. And more and more as our culture advances, those are the things that are being rewarded in the marketplace. Absolutely. It's about authenticity, genuineness, transparency, um, and you know we're at a place in time right now which is very different than when I started. You know, just the fact that we're sitting here and recording this on a phone that has you know tremendous technological capabilities, the fact that we do have social media, the fact that we have so many platforms at our fingertips, most of which are free. Uh, an ability to share a message or a product or service is unlike how it's ever been before. Yeah. So, anyway. And I just, like, you know, what you're saying just about, this is a, how, like, a creative can integrate into everything you're teaching, that it is, it's, it's why you want to create whatever you want to create and to, in a sense, funnel that, energy and that core desire to make whatever it is that you're making and to just channel that into bringing it out into yeah. the marketplace into the promotion and that it's not you know it's not it doesn't have to be an elimination of the creative force no that's in it's you. actually an expansion yes. of it it's yeah. like so in our company like now i've been doing what i'm doing i can't believe this for 20 years and our creative expressions, like you see so many of them because you see behind the scenes of us making stuff and then you yeah. see our, you know, what it comes out to be. Yeah. It is a true expression of our humor, our creative, like we totally. pour so much into it. It is a further expansion of our artistry. Yeah. And it is why we're six, we're still here, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so for every single person, you know, I'm thinking about, um, a mutual friend of ours who's also an, an actor, 
Bryce Dallas Howard. Mm -hmm. You know, she um, took B School. I, I didn't know her personally at all. She just happened to find about find out about B School. And when I got to know her, I asked her, I was like, you know, what made you sign up for this? Right. And she really started to realize for herself um, at a certain point in her career, she's like, I needed to think about myself as the brand. And I wanted to mm. break free from the kind of traditional ways of doing things and think about myself and all the things I want to do, including directing and writing, mentoring others, like kind of building something outside of the just traditional narrow yeah. lane of being a performer. And I and I just have just the notion, just want to interrupt for a sec, but I know, you know, when I'm working with people and and the notion of you as a brand is panicky. Of but course. it's just such it's I mean, it's true. It's we're selling, you know, what we create, and especially if it's more ethereal, like acting, um, it's yeah, you know, that, it stirs that, up a lot. That phrase too. We can even leave that phrase aside. You know, some people might have a, a kind of negative trigger reaction, like eh, I don't want to be. It's it's not about that. It's just knowing that you need to represent yourself to your colleagues, to your peers, to the larger world in a particular way. Yeah. You know, it's not often just about what you sell, it's about what you stand for. And so what do you stand that. for? What is and are the values that you wanna hold up? You have to be able to message into that. And none of this is around trickery or manipulation or being something that no. you're not. It's actually- That doesn't work. It doesn't work, but you have to have the courage and the bravery to articulate who you are and the change that you wish to see in the world or what you value. And all of those things fall under a larger umbrella of understanding business and understanding how to connect with people. All yeah. it's doing, all we really do in B-School is teach you how to inspire people to act. You know, the, the when I say that, I mean, sometimes the action you want people to take, especially if it's in a digital environment, is you just want them to click through and see your piece of work. Sometimes the action you want someone to take, you know, we've had a lot of nonprofits come through B-School, is you want them to donate or show up. You know, inspiring people to take an action that's good for them and good for you. That's a really beautiful thing. Yeah. And it is an art and a science in and of itself. And just sadly, these aren't the kind of things that we're usually taught um, in grade school or in high school and even in undergrad. And quite frankly, you know, even people that have had MBAs go through B school and say, wow, what you teach is way more actionable, way more pragmatic than the degree I spent $100,000 on. Yeah. We have lots of people that say that. But it, again, if you're an artist of any kind, you cannot, if you want to be financially successful, which you should want to be that, I think abundance is a beautiful thing. There's more than enough to go around. Yeah. The, the idea and the myth of the starving artist, it's painful and I think it's detrimental to your creativity. So if you wanna not only share great work with the world, but you wanna earn a great living doing it to take care of yourself and your family and have health insurance and all the things that we human beings want and deserve, then you need to embrace that you can and must learn about the business side of your craft. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, just so we can wrap this up, um, would love to hear just like a couple nuts and bolts yeah. things about B School, like what, how people, um, you know, once they okay, I'm I'm signed up for B School. Um, I, you know, it's like, a, uh, I'm going to go for it. Yes. Um, just a little bit about what the interaction is, yeah. with how they get the material. Just oh, let people know a little bit about that. Yeah. So um, for those of you that don't know, so B-School is online business school for modern entrepreneurs who not only want to make money, but also make a difference. Uh, we've had over 54,000 graduates from over 600 different industries, including a ton of creatives, actors, writers, singers, fine artists, you name it. In addition to all other traditional businesses, massage, people, people that make apps, again, 600 different industries, you yeah. can imagine it and 141 different countries, so it translates. I say all that to share that it's a proven program. It's been yeah. kicked and tested and run around the block. This is our 11th year doing it. Once you get into the program, 
Um, everything is delivered in a multimedia form, meaning that there are videos, there are audios, there are downloadable worksheets, but it's an extremely interactive and alive experience. We have B-School mentor coaches, which are successful business owners that have gone through the program that come back and help all of us go through the material again. We have an enormous community an international community of creatives that are like-minded. So there's a lot of conversations. I often go live in the member area to answer people's questions. Mm -hmm. The B-School mentor coaches go live. So there's, it's not like we're just putting you into this static cold environment and going like, okay, bye. Uh, that's not how it works. Um, so if you want to just learn on your own and just take it, you know, kind of just be there and just be quiet and observe and, and absorb, great. But if you want connection and interaction and coaching, that's available too and you don't pay anything more. It's just you learn how you learn best. We don't force anything upon you. The other thing I wanted to share, um, two things actually that are really important. One is because I started off my business being wildly in debt, incredibly scared, so insecure, not sure what was going on, creating learning environments that are extremely safe is one of our values. So B-School comes with a risk-free guarantee, meaning that if you sign up for the program, we have all of this very transparent on our site. As long as you do the work, because it's vital that people actually do the work, you can't just come in and say, oh, I just looked around and nothing worked. <laughs> it's like, that's not how life works in any domain. So as long as you do the work, if, if you do it and you're like, you know what, this isn't for me, you turn in your homework by a completed, by a specific date, which we um, we have everywhere, and we give you 100% of your money back. So there's nothing to lose and everything to gain. And yeah. the second thing I wanna share is that every B-Schooler is a B-Schooler for life. So over these past 11 years, every single year, you know this because you see me go through the process of shooting and reshooting and, and remaking everything. Yeah we continuously evolve the program, right? So we're always listening to our students, we're always looking out in the marketplace and seeing what we can update, what can, we can refresh, what we can make more effective. And so once you come into the program, you can do the program every single year, as long as it's in existence for free and you never pay more money. Yeah. Um, we have payment plans, people come back and do it year after year for free. You know, there's this great, I know you love Bruce Lee, there's this great Bruce Lee quote. It says, fear not the man that's practiced 10,000 kicks once. Fear the man that has practiced one kick 10,000 times. And B-School brings you back to yeah. the fundamental, timeless ideas, principles, tools, and practices that every creative needs to have their business, brand, career, sub, whatever you want, thrive now and in the future. It is technology agnostic in the sense that everything that we're teaching you, it doesn't matter how the algorithm change. It doesn't matter if you're using an iPhone or you're on Instagram or you're on Snap or you're on TikTok or whatever, because we're teaching you about the timeless principles that are psychology based and human based. And those things haven't changed for millennia. And sadly, they're the things that most people just don't even look to understand when it comes to how to create a thriving creative career. Yeah. And I know, you know, people ask me a lot, um, you know, could you share what I'm doing with, you know, with your audience and, yeah. you know, or with Committed Impulse or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And I just don't, do it because I haven't found anything that this is the only thing that um, that I I share because I've seen the value in myself. I've seen the value just in people that we come in contact with, just how it's helped help their business. So I just I want you guys to know um, this. This is something I think is awesome and. Also, to share, we have so much free content up right now. Right. That is 100% free. Um, so regardless, if you're interested at all in what Josh and I have been talking about, I'm sure you'll have the links yeah, below. Yeah, I'll put links uh, so you can check out. Yeah, take a look at all of the free content. You'll learn so much. Even if you never freaking do B-School, you will have so many ideas and so many clear actionable steps for you to take for your own career. It'll serve you no matter what. So we only share this particular free content one time a year. B-School only opens up one time a year and this is it. So I just wanted to say that. Just yeah, yeah. 
people enjoy no, this. No, people should check out yeah. the content and, and you'll know, like it'll, it'll either speak to you, um, you know, or, 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 it or it won't, yeah. but I just, people should know about it. Thank you. Right. And thanks you guys for uh, tuning in and listening. And if you have questions, um, if you have questions about B-School, Joshi is not the person to ask. <laughs> you can write to my team. Um, they will answer. We'll put a link below yeah. so you can. You can, you can um, get in touch with us. We're happy to answer any and all questions that yeah. you have. And our, our team is amazing at that. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Should we go back to our drinks? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers.